Hey guys, Llama here, and I am back with another video, and today we're looking at three farms that I honestly believe that you should start in your create world, no matter kind of where you start at already. These, all three of these are very, very good machines to have. So we're gonna go ahead and start off. We have the ore washing center. This is gonna do all of your ore processing. It's gonna get you a bunch of nuggets and stuff, and it's gonna help a lot with your production. And automatic crop farm, you can have as many of these as you want and they're very helpful for just getting you started. And an automatic iron farm. This is a very, very good one to have because just there's a lot of stuff that takes iron in Create, so it's very good to have early on. This is more so just to give you ideas of kind of what I recommend starting off as. You don't have to do these machines exact, but if you want to follow them, you can. None of them are really that resource intensive. The most resource intensive I would say would be the crop farm. Most of these are going to use a very small amount of brass and just a lot of iron and andesite because there's just going to be a bunch of cogs, there's going to be a bunch of fans and a lot, of, a lot of chain drives. But besides that, honestly, it's not too bad. As I go through these, I'm going to more so explain the process behind them. You can build them any way you need to. I don't believe, at least for myself, going with an exact guide would be the best strategy because everyone's base is different. They're, the engine is very modular and such that I made in the last video, but these are more so you're not gonna keep these. You're gonna upgrade these and you're gonna move on from them. So having something basic and having something that just works, I would say is the best plan of action. So the first machine that we're going to look at is the ore washing station. It's a very, very, very basic machine. So you put ore into this chest right here. It goes through these andesite funnels into this millstone, out onto this conveyor belt, which has these fans connected by a single chain drive right here, output into this chest with another andesite funnel. You actually want to use an andesite funnel here because as you can see, the first set goes through and it actually stalls long enough for the other ones to go ahead and get washed as well. So when I made this, I actually put the crate motor right here on 64 and I put down this drive right here, this belt to a slower speed using these cogs. You don't have to do that if you can make a speed controller. I don't recommend it, but you can. But also you want to have, this is a pretty good pace for it. It's not the fastest machine in the world, as you can see, but it's not slow. It lets the millstone work at a, whoops. It lets the millstone work at a good pace and lets the fans really move along and not get too caught up and you don't have any unwashed ores. So this is just the most basic ore washing center I could think of was just a millstone, some fans. You can even compact it down to a single fan if you want to use a brass funnel with a filter. That's up to you. It depends on if you have brass or not. So the second farm that we have is the simple just crop farm. I raised up the tick speed just so that it'd be a little bit easier to see what's going on. But as you can see, it just uses a single windmill bearing with some windmill sails on it, a chest, and a couple of these storage interfaces. So these storage interfaces are going to be the most expensive thing. As you can see though, as long as you have a press, they're not that bad to make at all. So you just have these two portable interfaces just looking at each other along with a belt, a couple andesite funnels, and an output. You can make the output go wherever you want. You can have the input wherever you want. I normally like putting it facing down so that it goes through the floor. And if you put it through the floor, that means it's completely sealed and you won't see any of it. You can also change this to a mechanical bearing if you wanted to. That's if you have some other type of power set up already. And then you can also do tree farms with it and you just add some deployers and then saws instead. It's a very, very nice radial system that you're gonna wanna just look into it for a lot of different things. Last but not least, and probably the most complicated of all these, but still not that complex, 
is the automatic iron farm. So this is my mostly compact iron farm. It's not the most compact ever in existence, but this is just what I wanted to make just so you guys could see more of what was happening. So it starts off with you want a simple cobblestone or stone generator. Preferably stone just because they fit better with the drills on them. You have a drill that goes from your power source, which my power source is down here, a single create motor right now. All these use create motors. You can change them out for windmills, water wheels, furnace engines. It's up to you. It that That's your own personal preference of how you want to power it. I just use the create motors just so that I can build the systems with a single power source in mind. So once we have this drill come out, it goes into a hopper, goes into this chest right here that's filling up with cobblestone, which is also nice because you can get some cobblestone if you really need it. Goes out into another millstone. These mills are very, very nice for just compact systems. Then, Andesite Funnel pushes it out into this belt, and once again, we have a large fan system that goes into a brass funnel this time because this is actually not long enough to start pushing through the amount of stone that come, the amount of gravel that'll come through. I would cover that up. I had a piece, I had a piece of material fall into there and it stopped up the entire system. But as you can see, this funnel that's blacklisted for gravel will keep out any of the gravel and just lets this all go. And it will build up a lot of iron really fast. So it comes in at full speed. And then I use some of these cog setups to actually slow down some mechanisms that we need. In my opinion, the best way, because most of this needs to be at full speed. If it's not at full speed, then it just won't run as efficiently. But in the end, you basically want a drill going into a mill, going into a set of fans. How you accomplish that is up to you. These are not the most compact. These are more starter systems. If you want, I can make compact versions of the ore washing station and this iron generating farm. If you guys want, it won't be too difficult. It's just I wanted to make some more starting systems right now. Just for people who are just now getting into Cray, are early in their worlds and such. But that's all I have today. These were the three farms I was going to look at. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions, any other farms that you'd like to see, other contraptions you would like to see. I have a lot of plans in the future. And if you want to check me out on Twitch, I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. That's where I do a lot of the designing, a lot of this set up and stuff for the videos along with just a bunch of survival stuff so if you want to join just head on over there the link's in the description guys thank you so much for watching though if you did like the video go ahead hit that like button and hit the sub button it'll keep you notified of videos that's all i have for today so guys i will see y'all in the next video goodbye